Welcome back to Okaloosa Today on Cox Cable. I'm Doug Rayner with the City of Destin, and we have a great show today. Uh, a couple of, uh, one recurring guest, I guess, and a new guest to talk about beach restoration. We've just had a storm event in Destin and the whole county and area, and uh, had some erosion, but we have a future project coming up, some beach restoration. And here to joining me today is Councilman Larry Hines. Thank you, Doug. And uh, Senior Engineer for Taylor Engineering, Matt Trammell. Uh, they are the engineer on record that's going to uh, oversee the project, the West Destin mm -hmm. Beach Restoration Project. So thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, we can just kind of dive into this. We talked about, uh, Last year, uh, Councilman Hines and I did about the kind of the history of our beaches and and and, uh, and Noriego Point. Going back, we're going to show you a photo of what um, the beaches looked like in 1989, and then that'll set kind of the stage for what we're going to talk about today. So, if we can show you that photo, uh, and Councilman Hines, just tell us what tell us what we're looking at and and what we have going on in the city of Destin right now. Well, this photo was taken in 1989, and it's a photograph of a photograph, so it's not the clearest, and it's out in front of Jetty East uh, on the western part of Destin, and it shows the robust sand dunes and vegetation that was in front of the properties at that point. And, uh, the beach goes out there probably four or 500 feet, and it's important to understand how important our beaches and really our sand dunes are to the city. Um, the sand, we're basically a barrier island, <clears throat> and the sand dunes provide protection from wave action and storms when waves come in. It protects upland property, protects infrastructure, the roads, and, and power lines. It's also very important for our economy, so healthy beaches are very important for us. Well, that's right. <clears throat> um, um, speaking of healthy beaches, let's, let's see a photo right now of, of kind of our, our current beach um, after or not our, not our current beach, but after some erosion and what that looks like. And uh, this is, you can, you can introduce this photo. Over the years, uh, really with Hurricane Opal in 95, this picture was taken, I think, in 2009. But the, uh, the waves and the erosion from a number of storms that either came uh, here or came close to here caused our beaches to erode. <laughs> so this is the same, in front of the same location you saw a minute ago. So that's what's happened to the beach over a period of about 15 years. Um, the waves were basically up against the sea walls. There was no room for the tourists or the citizens to come visit and enjoy the beach. So um, as a result of this, we had an emergency beach restoration project uh, in uh, December of 2009. Okay, and uh, this photo kind of mm -hmm. shows us that. Um, Matt, you are, from what I understand and what I hear, is a pretty good expert on, on beach restoration, and, and this is this was the restoration project, like Councilman Hines said in 2011. Tell us a little bit about this project. That's correct. <clears throat> Here we're looking uh, from Jetty East Towers, and you can see we're looking east over East Pass. This is the restored beach. Um, and actually, I'll clarify you. Uh, the project was completed late September 2010. 10, okay. um, 2009, Tropical Storm Ida came through and the emergency order was issued. And then within a year, we were able to construct this beach nourishment project. And we would have liked to put out more sand, um, but the larger beach restoration project was still being permitted. And this was just an interim measure uh, to get us through the tropical uh, season. Okay, good. And um, that's what it looks like. That's what we want it to look like. And that's not what it looks like today over the last um, year and a half since that sand mm -hmm. was put on the, uh, on the beach. We are left with um, this image here. How, how, how has that come, come about? Yeah, the, uh, well, well the project has done very well. It's actually done a little bit better than we anticipated, but as I mentioned, it was just an interim fix. Uh, it was not meant to provide uh, permanent storm protection to those properties, just an interim fix until we could get the larger restoration project completed. And that's why the focus was on primarily the, the sand dune protecting that seawall and the properties. Uh, there wasn't uh, an extensive beach width constructed. It was primarily focused on the dune. And you can see here, uh, the dune has been eaten away uh, quite a bit. The, the beach berm is, um, you know, heavily eroded and we're starting to eat into the sand dune, but uh, there's still quite a bit of sand before we reach those properties. And Larry, you have a good bit of experience with Holiday Isle. Um, that photo that we just saw was, um, was actually in the last week or so. It was taken <clears throat> basically the day that uh, Tropical Storm Debbie uh, went into north, northern Florida. It never even came uh, here, but the effects of it were <laughs> were fairly dramatic on the beach on Holiday Isle. Right, and that, this, that shows you what just, just, a, just a mild storm can do, um, and especially many mild storms over time. We haven't had a major storm in a while. We keep our fingers crossed that doesn't happen. Um, that has really given us and shown us the need for restoration. Our beaches are vital to our economy, and, and um, now we are 
we're in the need for a project to move forward. So we have a project going forward. Let's start with that and let's talk a little bit about where we are with that project right now. Well, we're in the permitting process. It is really close to being permitted. Uh, hopefully we will start uh, the project in either November or December of this year and get it done before the spring break season of 2013. Okay. Um, in the permitting process, how cumbersome is that? I'll let Mr. Matt answer that question. <laughs> All right, yeah. Matt. It's, uh, it's quite an extensive process. Uh, in the next segment, we'll, we'll go into what's required for that permit, but uh, there's a number of checks and balances that we have to do. It's typically a, a multi-year process to identify the proper sand sores, perform the correct feasibility studies. Uh, it's, it's quite a bit of work, but uh, we have uh, completed the permanent review, and we expect that permit to show up here within the next uh, couple weeks. Good. And so people who wonder why it might take so long to get something done, it's, it, there's a lot of hoops to jump through, a lot of, uh, a lot of applications and a lot of things like that. Permitting is one step, funding is another step. Where are we on our funding for the project? Well, the entire project uh, will be paid for by bed tax money that the TDC collected from the tourists. Uh, back in 2007, the county commissioners added a one cent uh, per dollar fee to the, when the tourists pay for their hotel bill, and the entire project will be paid for that. It will not cost any of the citizens uh, any money. And could we put that picture back up? I'd just like to talk about a couple things with respect to it. Sure. Which one do we want to look uh, the at? The very last one. The last photo. Um, what it shows is the where the sand is going to be placed, and the yellow, uh, the green is where the sand is going to be placed. This sand is going to protect about 3,000 properties that are uh, directly north there on Gulf Shore Drive. It will protect the road, the infrastructure. Gulf Shore Drive is a one-way in, one-way out road, so it's very important that we keep that road open. Power lines, utilities, etc. And then there's 3,000 properties that are due north of that. So that's, that's the importance of uh, that particular placement of sand. Okay, very good. And <coughs> that project scope, um, how much, how much uh, sand was put on the beaches back when we had our restoration project with, the, with Walton County, Matt? Uh, with Walton County, we were uh, just, uh, I think it was 2.8 million cubic yards, almost 3 million cubic yards okay. total. And are we looking at about the same amount of sand this time, a little less, a little more? Uh, the way we gauge that is on uh, fill densities, and the fill density will actually be a little bit greater in this area, just because the erosion is so much more extensive uh, close to the jetty. Uh, we're looking at, uh, for those two segments together, I think a total of somewhere around 700,000 cubic yards. However, with the emergency project, we've already placed um, in the neighborhood of 130, 140,000. So the remainder is somewhere around 560. Okay, good. Well, um, that's great. That's that's a good that's a good start. And I think I kind of led you into something we'll talk about here in just a minute. And that's the details of the project um, on the West Destin <laughs> beaches. So stick around. We're going to come back with Matt and Larry and talk about some details of the project. 